as a Christian, many of us would say, I want to be used by God. And that's what this video is about. Whether you're a new believer or have been walking with Jesus for decades, I want to discuss today how we can position ourselves to be used by God. Most of us would say we don't just want God to work in us, but we want Him to work through us, right? This is a natural progression as a believer, and this is biblical. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Ephesians chapter 2 reminds us that we don't do good works to be saved but because we are saved, right? For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We're all on the same plan field. We're saved because of what Jesus did on the cross. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So if you want to be used by God, this is a natural progression of things as you come to Christ. When we grow in our relationship with Jesus, we want to do things for the kingdom of God. So how can we position ourselves to be best used by the Lord? And that's what I want to talk to you about out of 2 Timothy chapter 2. He says, For God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So first, to be used by God, we have to be in Christ. He says the Lord knows those who are His. And he knows those who are not his as well, right? And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So we're putting our old life behind us. That's a part of coming to Jesus, right? That's a part of that repentance that happens when we come to Christ. We're putting all iniquity away. We're departing. We're saying, God, I am chasing after you. I'm chasing after you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us. That faith comes alive. And then that sanctification process begins, right? He says, now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use and some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Now, Paul likes to use the analogy of a house a lot, and this is something that speaks to me personally, and we're going to get more into that in a moment, but he says there are vessels for honorable use and some for dishonorable. And obviously, we want to be used for honorable use. He talks about the different materials and what the tools are made of or the vessels are made of. He says gold and silver are the ones for honorable use and wood and clay for dishonorable. Gold and silver in the Bible, we see this used a lot when talking about things that have been purified by fire, that sanctifying process. See, he says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So what Paul is saying right here is that if anyone cleanses himself, he's saying that we have action to take, that we have work to do. The commentary on this says this, Paul spoke about a cleansing that isn't just something that God does for us as we sit passively. This is a self-cleansing for service that goes beyond a general cleansing for or sin. There's a main aspect of cleansing which comes to us as we trust in Jesus and His work on our behalf. This work of cleansing is really God's work in us and not our work. This is the sense of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But there's another aspect of cleansing which God looks for us to do with the participation of our own will and effort. Not that it is our work apart from God, but it is a work that awaits our will and effort. If anyone cleanses himself, this aspect of cleansing is mostly connected with usefulness for service and closeness to God or intimacy with Jesus. Sanctified and useful. Sanctified means set apart, just as much as there are certain bowls and plates that we use more than others or are set aside to some honorable purpose. So some people are more sanctified and useful to God than others. They are more prepared for every good work than others. Why is that? Because some are more willing 
to sanctify themselves, right? Some are more willing to put that effort into it. And guys, this is just the God's honest truth. This is Paul's words, not mine. You know, if we want to be used by God, a lot of us say, God, I want you to use me, but we don't actually want to give up that one thing. We don't actually want to step away from that habit. And I know this is hard. I used to be a smoker. I've had all kinds of addictions in my life and things that I like to do and that I just really had a hard time giving up, right? But I wanted to be set apart and sanctified for honorable use for the Lord. Now, again, is this about salvation? No, this is not about our salvation. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in 11. He says, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, or the judgment seat of Christ, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So again, is he talking about salvation here? No, he's not. He's talking about reward. But see, Paul is talking about a house again, but he's kind of using this similar analogy about how are we going to be used? What material are you going to build your house out of, right? But in Timothy, he's saying, are you going to position yourself to be used as honorable use or dishonorable use for the Lord? And this depends on your personal sanctification. This depends on your personal efforts and your personal action. Again, not to be saved, but because we are saved. This is more about those who want to mature in their faith and want God to use them and walk in that anointing of the Lord. And you're saying, God, I want to set myself apart. And I know I'm secure in you. I know I'm saved. I know I'm in you. I'm not doing this for any of that. I'm secure in that, right? So let's get past that. We know we are justified in Jesus. And this is now, I want to be effective for the kingdom of God. That's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about being effective men and women for the kingdom. It doesn't just mean a, a five-fold ministry. It doesn't mean just vocational ministry. It doesn't mean an online ministry. It could just mean wherever you work, whatever field you are in, whatever profession you are in, you can be anointed in that too. You can be anointed in whatever field God has put you in, whether you're an athlete, whether you work in construction, whether you're an accountant, it does not matter. The first person in the Bible recorded to be filled with the Spirit of God was an artist that worked with his hands who built the tabernacle of the Lord. So this is not just about preaching and teaching and prophets and apostles and, and shepherds or pastors and all of that. This is talking about where you are today and that God wants to use you for honorable use where you are right now. So how do we do this? How do we purify ourselves for that honorable use? He tells us starting in verse 22, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So the instructions that we are given here are actually pretty simple. I know this is one of those probably easier said than done things to pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Guys, this is only something that we can do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you pray and ask the Lord, God, give me the grace to pursue righteousness, to pursue faith, to pursue love, and to pursue your peace. These are the fruits of the Spirit also, right? God, give me the grace to pursue these things. I want to be used by you, my friend. I guarantee you the Lord will show up and He will honor that. That pleases the heart of the Father. Remember in John 14, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And this is a part of that. This is saying, Jesus, I want to do what makes you happy. In John 15, I want to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. This is pleasing to the Father and the Holy Spirit will absolutely help us pursue these things. He goes on to say, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of truth, that they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil 
people after being captured by him to do his will. So we're not to be quarrelsome, we're to walk in gentleness. Basically, guys, we're to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. And when we correct our opponents, we do it with what? Gentleness. We're not wagging our finger at people. We're also not going out there looking for problems, right? We're just minding our business saying, Lord, you're using me in this area and I'm going to keep my focus on you, Jesus. I'm going to do what you've asked me to do and I am going to do the work of the kingdom of God. And guess what? There's going to be people to come to you that want to argue. There's going to be people that come to you that want to tell you that you're doing it wrong. You should do it this way, that way, and the third. But it says the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach and patiently enduring evil. Is this not what Jesus did? He walked in that meekness, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Okay, so there's a gentleness about our walk. And if we do this, we will remain in that honorable use for the Lord. So to recap what Paul is telling us here, guys, is that if we want to be useful in the kingdom of God, if we want to be that honorable instrument that the Lord uses, then we have a responsibility in the matter to sanctify and consecrate ourselves. There's no better way to start this process than in prayer. And like I said, asking the Lord, show me God, teach me your ways, knowing the word of God, putting ourselves, our nose in the Bible, learning what pleases is the heart of God, learning what God loves, learning what God hates, walking in the fear of the Lord. And we're not doing this out of a religious, traditional sense, but rather we're getting to know the character of God and what makes Him happy, what He loves and what He hates, right? And as we do this and pray and say, God, I want to sanctify myself. I want to set myself aside for honorable use for you. I promise, my friend, He will show up and you will see His presence in your life. Your desires will start to change. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I've walked through it myself. I've put down some really tough things in my own life, but I'm telling you, it is rewarding and the Lord will absolutely see you and honor you where you are at. Remember, He can see your heart. The Bible says that the one who exalts himself will be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted, right? So if you're praying this prayer and you're saying, God, I want to be used by you, and you start to notice this draw away from worldly things, this draw away from some of your habits, this draw away from uh, maybe youthful passions or things that you've carried throughout your life, and you might notice the Holy Spirit saying, hey, give me that. Hey, put that down. Hey, will you give me that? Hey, will you give me that? Again, guys, this isn't about salvation, right? This is about being used by the Lord. If you notice Him doing that, my friend, friend, if you'll obey and follow that still small voice of the Lord, you are setting yourselves up to be used for honorable use by the God of the universe. And there is no greater honor than that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would certainly appreciate it and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button. And that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people so that they can hear this message. But thank you so much for watching this today, and I will see you in the next one.